Well, I'm back at Temperance Street Brewery and I'm brewing something potentially a little special. I've only ever seen this style of beer once before. Uh, it was quite a few years ago now, in the first or the second Manchester Beer Week, when um, a load of the local breweries got together and we all brewed different historical beer styles from the brewed in the area. And Blackjack Brewery at the time brewed something called a C Ale, as in the letter C. And um, yeah, that's the first time it's been brewed since the 1950s. It's a style that is local to Manchester that just kind of faded out, it disappeared. And um, nobody kind of knows why, really, it just stopped. Um, so yeah, it disappeared in the late 1950s, could have been any reason, tastes, um, ingredient availability. The ingredients for it, for the original ones, aren't actually that um, complicated. I've got them written down here, and if I just dig them out, it's heritage grains, or what we'd now consider heritage grains, a little bit of pilsen malt, some very light crystal malt, uh, some black malt, and some invert sugar. And it comes out somewhere between 5 5.5%. Five um, I'm going to be brewing a modern version of this, because I don't really like using invert sugar. Nothing against it, I just don't really get on with it. So I'm just altering the malt bill so I don't have to do that. Also, because of the sweetness that the sugar would have brought, even though it would have fermented out to sort out the alcohol content, I'm, without that, I've got to be careful about the black malt so we don't get too much astringency. So for this modern variation of um, a CL, I'm going to do a black IPA trick. I'm going to, instead of putting the black malt in with the rest of the malt in the mash, I'm going to use it in the sparge. So after mashing, I'll, once we've got the sparge going, I'll probably run the sparge for a while to recirculate it and drop the temperature down a bit, add the black malt at that point, and then continue recirculating until we get the color out of that. Hot size, it's just fuggles. Really not much in the way of fuggle, uh, only about 20 IBU. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what this one comes out like. And the plan is, I, uh, this is, I'm gonna do two, one, one or two pins of that, of this, depends how easy it is to brew today. Um, and then it's gonna go into a wooden pins and go to a particular beer festival that I've been asked to, um, well, invited to provide beer for, which specializes in older style beers. Um, so yeah, with any luck, this will be available in a wood pin from this beer festival. And um, if it's nice, I might just keep rebrewing it a bit more and have it on available down at Temperance Street. Might even bottle it if it's really nice and just keep some for, my, for myself. So let's see how this one goes. Well, here's our malt for today, um, in these two tubs. So in this one, we have four kilos of Marisotta. Sorry, not my sort of Chevalier. Um, it's a nice heritage grain. Gives a lot more of the um, biscuity flavours, the earthy flavours that you get from the grains that you would have done back in the 1950s and earlier. Um, so that's our base malt, the one we're getting, aiming to get the most sugar from, although it is an absolute sod to get sugar from. Um, it just doesn't convert very well. But that's, that's okay. Um, because in this tub, we have... Uh, 1.3 kilos of Marisotto on the left. On the right, we have uh, 650 grams of Raymond's Pilsner malt, which we're using because it has a high enzymatic content to it. That really encourages enzyme conversion, sort of like the starch conversion in other malts that are in there. So between that and the Maris, we should be able to get more sugars out of the Chevalier. And then in the middle, we've got um, dark crystal malt. Um, the original... Uh, sea ales use light crystal, but then they're using invert sugars and they're using the um, the chocolate malt or the black malt for colouring. So instead, I'm using dark crystal because it will have a lot of those sort of sugar flavours to it. It is an absolutely gloriously tasty um, malt as well. So my water's now up to temperature, so about time to mash in. And that's it, mashed in. Um, because we're using Chevalier, which is an old grain crab extraction, this is going to have a, an hour and a half mash, stirred every 30 minutes, so pretty much not going to do anything with it now for half an hour, and as we can see, it's nicely at 65 degrees Celsius, so let's just leave it be. 
Right, we've got to the end of the mash, so I have in here 260 grams of black malt. Got some water heated up here, and the mash here. So, as you can see from this really turbid um, sample I just pulled out from it, it is it's not a bad brown colour, but adding the black malt to it is going to make it much, much darker. So, I'm going to set this up with the black malt on top, sparge in, and then recirculate for a while to um, just get some more of that colour out and then fly sparge it over to the copper. So yeah, as you can see, black malt just gets sprinkled out on top of the normal mash and then we'll get our sparge arm here. So we'll just put some more water in from the uh, hot liquor tank just so that there is stuff there to go through the pumps and the pipes and, and then we'll just recirculate that over the top of it for a while. So yeah, I'll just put a little tub on there just to hold out because these pipes when they get warm they go very floppy but yeah recirculating your mash like this it literally is just coming out of there through the pump back into the top through that sparge arm that's in it's not a normal technique that you do on a commercial scale um but we are we've got that black malt in there and we just want to try and get the color from it um as you can see i've let the mash drop down to about 60 so we can not get in quite as much of the astringency from that. The chevalier grain can bring quite a lot of astringency already, um, and so will the black crystal or the dark crystal. So we shall um, see what we can get from that. We just want the colour. We don't want any of the extra um, astringency from the black malt. So yeah, we'll give that about 10-15 minutes. We can see already it's you know starting to darken up. So. Um, shouldn't really take too long and then once we, we've got the colour that we want um, we just start sparging through the, the normal liquor, the sweet fly sparge through into the copper and um, then we can start the boil. Right, we're on to the hops now and I have here some frozen foggles from last year's hop harvest. So we get to actually use uh, green hops even though we're not brewing it in green hop season. Um, we've found by doing the project here that frozen if you freeze your green hops they will last a good couple of years uh, before they start losing in their, their potency so that's just going in the hot spider there and that's the first hop edition and we'll set the timer and give it the second hop edition in quite well so yeah i think it's either 30 minutes for the second hop edition or another 50 it's only a 60 minute boil so we'll just leave it be for now